What is up guys, that's it here, it is Sanctuary Sunday once again and we're going to talk about your character. That's right, your character. Where does the Nephilim that you pit against the demonic hordes every day actually come from? What are the origins of the barbarian or wizard or demon hunter? Let's find out. This blasted region was once home to the many barbarian tribes and their beloved Mount Ariad, site of the World Stone. In the course of the World Stone's destruction, half of Mount Ariad's bulk exploded outward. Now all that remains is a massive, smoldering crater in the Earth. The after-effects of the World Stone's destruction have left a terrible mark upon the realm. Demonic corruption now runs rampant, threatening both man and beast. Tales have spread of phantom horrors and infernal mutations stalking amidst the scarred forest lands, making the Dreadlands a destination shunned by all but the hardiest or most foolish of travelers. No longer charged as caretakers of the sacred mountain, some barbarians have left Ariad behind and struck out to battle evil in atonement for failing in their ancient stewardship. Other tribes have fallen into a state of regression, becoming akin to unreasoning beasts and, in some cases, even cannibals. One of the only civilized sites left in the Dreadlands is the fortress known as Bastion's Keep. Built long ago by Corsic, son of Rakis, the keep now stands as a bulwark between the violent tribes in the north and the civilized lands to the south. The brave soldiers who guard its walls remain ready to confront any foe, human or otherwise, who might besiege them. And while not native to the region, the secretive order of warriors, known as the Demon Hunters, has chosen to make its home in the harsh and unforgiving Dreadlands. The abundance of demonic creatures and mutated beasts provides a wealth of training opportunities for the Demon Hunters to hone their deadly skills. Ivgorod is a land steeped in tradition and mystery. It is known as the City of the Patriarchs and the religious oligarchy rules with an iron fist. The religion of Ivgorod is known as Saptev and is devoted to the worship of a thousand and one gods and goddesses. This rigidly complex system controls and informs every aspect of Ivgorod's society. The exotic civilizations of Ivgorod once held sway over surrounding lands, such as portions of Ansteig and the northern deserts of Aranok. It is fascinating that some of the ancient rulers of Ivgorod are interred beneath the Valley of the Ancient Kings, but due to Rakis's crusade, the power of this land was broken. Now all that remains of this once great civilization is its snow-capped capital. The monks of Ivgorod are rarely seen outside of their predominantly isolationist kingdom. Secretive and reclusive, these holy warriors undergo intense mental and physical training to hone their minds and bodies into living instruments of divine justice. The immense, teeming jungles of Toraja span most of the southwestern expanse of the eastern lands. Even to nearby Kajistan, this region is a strange and exotic place, filled with vibrant and dangerous flora and fauna that cannot be found anywhere else on Sanctuary. The verdant Torajan rainforests have cultivated many ancient civilizations, many of which have been lost to the annals of time. The reclusive Umbaru tribes of the Teganze forest remain the exception. These groups are said to engage in a highly ritualistic style of warfare in which prisoners willingly submit themselves as sacrifices to honor the revered spirits of the rainforest. The Umbaru's overriding belief is that our world is merely a curtain that veils a true reality called Mbuiru Eikura, commonly known as the Unformed Land. One might ask, how do Umbaru know the unformed land exists if it's hidden from mortal eyes? The answer lies with the tribe's witch doctors, who purportedly can see and experience this otherworldly realm. Witch doctors are fearsome spiritual warriors who have the power to assault both mind and body with dark magics. It has been reported that some witch doctors even possess the ability to summon risen dead to serve them. 
The swamplands, or as they are otherwise known, the wetlands, are located in the far east of Sanctuary. The sea envelops them to the south. The legendary lost city of Ureh, the Light of Lights, lies in the west, and the dry steppes stretch to the north. It is into the swamplands that the Crusaders ventured after the founding of their sacred order. In those unwelcoming depths, the Crusaders seek to purify the Zakharum faith that Akan told them to hold dear. It is a rigorous realm to travel in, and lice and other vermin are constantly present. Fearing infection, many Crusaders shaved their heads to reduce the chance of carrying disease. The Crusaders are not the only order to hail from the dangerous realm of the Swamplands. A vast underground city, secluded from the rest of the world, allows the priests of Rathma to pursue their distinct kind of arcane science. For it is through the teachings of Rathma, as well as years of research and physical experimentation, that these men have come to understand and hold sacred the delicate balance of life and death. It is this practice that has led outsiders to refer to them as necromancers. Though near to the cultures of Kajistan and Torajan, the folks of the swamplands are quite distinct. The native humans of those lands are fairer of skin and hair when compared to their neighbors. Xiansai is a mountainous island nation found in the frozen sea at the roof of the world. Due to the isle's insular nature, the Xi'an have developed a highly distinct culture, devoid of major foreign influence. The kingdom distanced itself from the Sin War, the Mage Clan Wars and other notable conflicts, but it has seen its own share of civil strife. Historically, many of Xi'an Sai's internal wars have originated from the political maneuvering of the great families that hold sway on the island. These wealthy trade groups are said to be constantly competing with one another for influence and power. Each one of these families controls a specific aspect of the kingdom's economy, from its robust fishing industry to the mining of precious metals and gems in the towering Guoji mountain range. Xi'an Sai's religion is a confounding one, boasting a complex hierarchy of gods that even the kingdom's priesthood has never formalized in any accepted manner. However, it is important to note that this system of belief has not dissuaded the Xi'an from practicing magic. The nation's isolated mountains are, in fact, littered with arcane repositories and an untold number of lost enchanted artifacts that suggest magic has been a part of the culture for millennia. Today, mages from Chaldeum's Ishari Sanctum visit the island every few years in search of young prodigies they can take under their wing and tutor in their specific vocations. Those Xi'an who return to their homeland as full-fledged mages are highly sought after by the great families to fill the ranks of their personal armies. And so ends this week's Sanctuary Sunday. I hope you enjoyed the short tales of the places the Nephilim call home, and you appreciate the immense journeys that all six characters have undertaken. Once again, I'll end on a question. Would you like to visit one of those places in a future Diablo game, or in the case of the Barbarian, revisit them and see how they've changed? And if so, which one would you like to visit the most? As always, if you like the content, I would greatly appreciate your subscription to my channel, keep in touch with the Twitter and Facebook that I link below, and I'll see you guys next time.